Hello, I'm Bobby with Weatherford Paranormal. I've um, had quite a few questions on some of the things that I build uh, for our investigations. This one here is just a really, really simple and easy and very cheap way of making a EMF pump. Um, first, you want to get a project box. Uh, this one here is a 4 by 6 um, Project boxes come in all different sizes. This one here, as you see, is a smaller one. Um, you would not have enough room in this. Uh, I recommend the 4 by 6 or a little bit bigger. Um, I have one that's a little bit bigger, but I figured I already had this box, I would try it. All right, first, you want to get a switch. You're going to need some type of switch. I have a bunch of these. Um, these are rated for up to 125 volts. Um, so these work perfect for me. I just I happen to have a ton of them, so I use them. Uh, you can pick up any kind of uh, little switches. Um, you can get the push button switches at Radio Shack, pretty cheap. Uh, this one here, I, I went ahead and pre-cut the hole and went ahead and I put it in the top of my uh, my box here, and I changed the wires out on them just because I like the the solid wires. And most of the ones that you're going to get from Radio Shack. You know, either going to have solid wires on them, or you're uh, you're going to have to solder the wires on them yourself, which is a really simple and easy thing to do. Um, also, through a lot of my projects, I use this. It's a liquid tape. It's really good to put on your solders. A lot better than just regular tape. It coats it really well. But anyways, got the box here. It's uh, just an empty box. So what you're going to need is. A magnet pad. Um, basically, you get two of them in a pack. You can get them at Walmart. I think they're like a dollar, dollar ninety-eight maybe. Um, you know, it's just a little magnet pad there. You're gonna cut it, which I've pre-done here. You're gonna cut it to the size of the bottom of your box. And this magnet pad has a sticky side to the bottom of it, so you can just pull this, this white tape here. Pull that off and you're going to place it in the bottom of your box here. Very simple. No glue, nothing. Just put it down there and it'll hold. Next, you're going to need some type of motor. Uh, low voltage motor, you know, something that can run off of a 9 volt is what I found best. Uh, this right here is a um, is a cooling motor for or a cooling fan for a uh, computer. All I did was I cut off all the uh, the fan blades and and kind of made it a little smooth around the edges there. Uh, but this here you're going to mount dead center of your box. Um, so what I use is super glue or not well you can use super glue but I use hot glue. Just get a hot glue gun here. Put a dab on the bottom, right on top of your um, your magnet pad, and then place that fan motor or any kind of motor right at the bottom. And that's it. Very simple. Next, you're going to want to take. We'll set that to the side. You're going to want to take um, popsicle sticks. Uh, very cheap. You can buy them by the ton, very cheap. So we're going to get popsicle sticks. Here's what you're going to want to do is that popsicle stick is going to glue to the top of this this fan motor, but you're going to have to cut it to make sure it doesn't hit the sides, um, which I have pre-cut mine and I have it all ready. Um, also on that that stick you're going to put magnets. So I've got magnets on both sides and these are super magnets. Um, you can get them at Walmart also in the craft section, but here they are. I think these are maybe two bucks for the super magnets. Very, very strong. They're really nice. I'm just gonna take that and I've I've kind of measured some things out so the video you know doesn't take too long. But we're gonna take this and we're gonna mount it to the very top of this motor. I'm gonna get a dab of hot glue here. We'll put that dead center of the motor.
just like that. And that way it can spin around and you see it does not hit the sides and it'll spin freely. Is what this does is when it spins it causes an EMF field to be generated between the bottom magnet and these super magnets. And it's a pretty nice, pretty nice little field that happens. Alright, next you're gonna need this. This I use nine volt batteries because they tend to last a lot longer in a project like this. I can put the battery inside it. Um, usually I'll use some double stick tape or velcro uh, on my batteries and I'll place them in an area that'll just be out of the way. Today I do not have any double sided tape so I'm just gonna place it in there to let you see how, how it would go. Um, I'm not going to do any soldering here. I'm just going to tie my wires together just to show you how it's done, and then I'll go back later and solder it. Uh, if you if you don't know how to solder, um, you can you can make sure your wires are tight together and tape them up really good. I've seen some people do that and it works, um, but the best thing to do is solder it. Anytime you solder, you always want to do extra wire. So we'll strip our wires here. Now from the switch, we've got our switch on the top of our box here. From our switch, one of the wires there will connect to one of the wires of the battery. And that's going to be the red wire. The red wire of the battery, that's your positive. We're going to connect that to one side of the switch. And like I said, I'm just going to twist my wires around right now. I'll go back later and I'll solder it up. Um, make sure I have a, a really good connection there. But for the time being, I'm just going to tape it. Just so my connections do not touch together. The other side, because I've had two wires come off of my switch here, the other wire is going to connect to the positive terminal of my motor. So all that switch is doing is it's cutting off the current running from your battery to your motor so you can easily turn the device on and off. Just attach these up here. Now, from our battery terminal here, we have a black wire, which is our negative. That's going to connect to the black wire or the negative side of your motor. Okay, so there we have it. That is pretty much it. Um, you can add other magnet strips if you want along the sides. Uh, that enhances the EMF a little bit. Um, like I said, these are pretty much the magnet strips I use. Um, you know, they come in little quarter inch strips. They're really nice to place along the sides and stuff. Uh, but here, inside your box, you need to keep your wires away from your motor. I always use hot glue. Um, I'll, I'll hold the wires down and hot glue them to the sides. That way they stay completely out of the way of the motor. You never want those wires to get, get caught up in there because if you're on an investigation and they get caught up in the motor then your device is not going to be working properly. So I'll just take that, that glue and I'll press it down on those wires to keep them into place. And that should hold them down right there. Alright. Now we're going to attach our battery here. 
like I said, I'm going to go through and I'm going to attach my battery with some double-sided tape uh, here a little bit later. And I'll, I'll go back through and glue down all my wires a little bit better. That way they stay out of the way of the motor. I just want to make sure that everybody knows how to make this. you'll put it down. Now, as you can see, when I turn it on, and like I said, the batteries are, the wires are out of the way, your motor's going to spin with your magnets on it. And a lot of times with these motors, they'll get up and going. It spins quite well. Now, the EMFs that they generate, got a little EMF meter here, see how it's going on and off, take it away, it puts out a pretty big, I don't know if I have a big enough camera shot here, but I'm right there, this EMF detector is about a foot and a half away, and it's going off on it, Let's bring it back, it won't go off. Bring it up here, still doesn't go off. I bring it up close to it, send it off those EMFs. Now, we'll turn this off. See how the EMF detector is still going off? But as soon as I stop this, it quits. So, that is a very cheap, inexpensive way to make an EMF pump. Now, the ones that I've seen online, yeah, they're a lot more high-tech, not just using magnets and a little motor and a battery, um, but you're going to spend 80, 90 bucks, maybe even more on them. This right here, the whole setup, the, the project box, battery, the little wires, um, and the motor, and most of this stuff you can find in some electronics that you don't even use anymore, but if you need to buy every bit of this, you might spend 15 bucks. So this is a very, very cheap way of doing it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can email me at bobby at weatherfordpi.com um, and I'm going to try to get some more uh, videos of other things that I've built, maybe some IR lights and, and stuff like that. But thank you for watching.